the city of thousand minarets. Welcome to Cairo. Noisy, dusty, and obeying no rules. They don't even try to stop. Wherever you look, antiquities that keep secrets of an astounding civilization. It's like an outer space. In this episode, I will get inside the Great Pyramid of Khufu. You can't fill in here. I'll visit a true hell for camels. He's kept! Well done! I will descend into the gloomy dungeons of the ancient tombs and even manage to visit the gem of the Mediterranean Sea. My god, it's just heaven. Prepare to be amazed. The hot journey through the African country starts here. Friends, hello everyone! Behind me is no ordinary river, it's the Great Nile. Yes, it's a wonderful world of the pharaohs, tombs and ancient secrets. I remember when I was a kid, for my birthday I received the mummy. I watched the hell out of it and I remember it by heart. It was then that I set the goal to come to Egypt to try to unravel the uniqueness of the ancient civilization and get imbued with its spirit. To be fair, I only visited Egypt once, and then that Egypt, the all-inclusive one. So I know absolutely nothing about the country and its history. Well, it's time to fix this situation. And I invite you to come with me to see Egypt without Sham el-Sheikh and Haggadah. And we'll start with its heart. Welcome to Cairo! Cairo is the largest city of the Muslim world. It stretches along both sides of the River Nile. Over 9 million people live their bustling Cairo lives here. And if we take the Ilgiza region, then it's 20 millions. And perhaps everyone who comes here is amazed by the greatness of the pyramids and the centuries-old history in general, and disappointed by the dust and noise which seems to have no end. The pyramids will wait a bit. First of all, I decided to feel Cairo, to hear its heartbeat. And the best place for this, in my opinion, is the market. We came to Han el Halili for souvenirs. I will be accompanied by the guide Ahmed, who speaks excellent Russian, across Han el Halili and other parts of Cairo. It's come this way after all. It's all handmade. Yes. Is it the same? Does this mean something? This is for Muslims only, people from Islam, only they wear this. This is the largest market in modern Africa. Long time ago, almost all the old Cairo residents loved spending time here. Some sold, others bought, third ones stole. And centuries later, little has changed. Both, back then and today, a rich bizarre life rages in thousands of square meters. The shops are bursting with items made of gold, silver, copper, leather, in a word, everything that tourists like. I wanna buy. My hands are itching to buy something. I haven't worn earrings in a while. Beauty. Egyptian power. Hey, it's really hard not to spend everything from your wallet. Having somehow fought off the barkers, we rushed to walk around the historical part of the city, the old Cairo. The most ancient area of the Egyptian capital occupies the territory where Cairo's predecessor city stood. The largest of these were Babylon of Egypt and Alphastad. You know, even though old Cairo is meant to be a mix of English and French architecture, for some reason it reminds me of Barcelona the most. On the one hand, beautiful facades, on the other, devastation and mountains of rubbish, glitter and poverty in the same bottle. The architecture is, of course, very beautiful and diverse. You can't see it yourselves. And cats here are a dime a dozen. I heard that, for instance, there are special sprinklers near stores and the cats are sprayed with water so that they don't enter. No. No, there is no such thing. Are there many stray cats? Yes, wild ones. And there are many stray dogs. But they are considered sacred animals, right? Sacred, yes. At the time of the ancient Egyptians, sacred. And now? These are the wild ones. Well, these are Egyptian cats. Traffic in Cairo is like cats, I go wherever I please. No road rules whatsoever. The most important thing is how to cross the road in this madness. 
They don't even try to stop. Traffic in Cairo. Cars are going. There are no pedestrian crossings. You just have to madly go before the cars and hope that you won't get hit. There are just no other options. They just drive ahead and that's it. Very, very noisy. It's as if they are just competing with the loudest. Welcome to Cairo. There is one rule, however, but I doubt it's written in the traffic rule. If I feel like going right, I go right. If it's left, I go left. By the way, there is not a single road sign. But how does one get the license? License? One has to pass an exam. What's in the exam? Just drive around the city and don't hit anyone. Yes. <laughs> I see. So, by some miracle, safe and sound, we get to the country's main museum. Here it is, the Egyptian Museum. The collection contains about 160,000 exhibits. And since the excavations are still ongoing and every day something new is found, the museum gets topped up more and more. By the way, they're building a new museum, a huge one. It is planned to move the exhibits there by the end of the year. Therefore, it's a great pleasure for me that I got to this very museum, which was opened in 1901. Antiquities collection is spectacular, it well deserves to be considered one of the greatest museums in the world. I would not want to cross paths with such a crocodile. The museum collection is so vast that they've built a new building to house all the exhibits. It is incredibly massive. The movie has already begun and I'm lucky to have met the old museum still in operation. The exhibits are arranged in chronological order and spread over two floors, so it is best to go clockwise from the entrance. Rooms on the first floor are dedicated to the ancient Middle and New Kingdoms, on the second one, mummies and everything related to Tutankhamun. While passing by, I learned the story of slippers. They took papyrus from the Nile, on the banks of the Nile, they went home and made sandals and slippers. Therefore, the first people in history to wear slippers and sandals were the ancient Egyptians. Whatever shoes you wear, it's almost impossible to walk around the entire Egyptian museum in a day. But it's definitely worth a visit. And now I'm headed to see other antiquities, those in the open air. Well, we finally reached the national treasure of Egypt. These are the pyramids of Giza. And behind me is the largest pyramid, the Pyramid of Khufu. This titan is the legacy of the ancient Egyptian civilization, which perhaps every school kid knows about. The age of the Pyramid of Khufu, just think about it, is more than 4,000 years. Weight around 4 million tons. Height 139 meters. And inside there are mysterious corridors. We got inside the pyramid. You can't film in here. It's written there, no cameras. But this doesn't stop us, of course. From time to time, we need to switch it off. Well, we are now climbing 100 meters up. And then 100 meters down. Oh, put the camera away. Yes, you need to be very careful here. Let's go. Oh my. It's not all that easy to visit the pyramid. Behind the Pyramid of Khufu is the majestic Sphinx, the largest monolithic statue, height of a six-story building. The Sphinx was built before the pyramids, presumably during the reign of Pharaoh Khafre. The guide corrects me, it was not built but carved out of the rock. What for? Scientists are still arguing. Here. They turned the granite. It's straight from top to bottom. Blind me. This is no limestone, it's granite. And again, it's unknown how, right? Yes. How did they turn the granite to keep it straight? The sixth wonder of the world is the granite. 
This stone has six angles. This is a single stone, 15 tons. How did they make six angles is also a mystery. Everybody comes to the Sphinx just like that. There are boys running around here who will take pictures of you for money and they will show you how to pose for a photo in front of the Sphinx. Of course, the Sphinx and the pyramids are the symbols of Egypt, but it's not just them. One can't go without camels. These animals help their owners make decent money from tourists. Therefore, get your pocket ready. What if I fall off it? I can say for sure, if you fall, it will be from quite the height. I am still afraid. Why so? No! Is it possible to walk on a flat road? If you love Egypt, then do love to ride a camel. To be honest, I'm most afraid of not even falling off him. But if he gets loose and runs away, and they run very fast, how handsome is he? I think so too. Well, the very first camel riding experience was successful. I didn't fall, that's good enough. Someone will say, stop bullying animals. Wait until you see the camel market. Faint-hearted ones better fast forward it. Trade is in full swing. Camels, sellers and buyers, everything got mixed up. Noise, din and cruelty. Only 35 kilometers from Cairo, but the feeling is that civilization has stepped back. Nightmare, I can't. My heart is bleeding seeing all these poor camels. Prices for humble cattle of Egyptian origin start at 20,000 pounds. It's about 100,000 rubles per individual. It can go up to 50,000. This is around 250,000 rubles for a particularly high quality and hardy breed. Why do they beat them? So that they obey, they are disobedient. How will they choose the camels? Not by one, they choose them all together, like wholesale. Is it? Are they just shouting out the price? Yes. Does that mean they bought it? Yes. You may ask, what do they buy camels for? And perhaps now you will be shocked. But they're mainly bought for food. Camel meat is highly valued in these places. They are also bought for milking. Milk of these animals is in very high demand. Camels are also used to transport goods over long distances. And for fun as well. Camel racing is popular in small towns and villages. I briefly lost sight of my companion Ahmed. It's somewhat uncomfortable. It's kind of scary to be left without a guide. I get that, of course, nothing will be done to me here. I can say for sure that tourists are welcome here. You can come here, they'll take photos with you, they'll be hospitable, but you should only come here if you have a strong heart. Because I feel very sorry for the camels. Very sorry. But there is no such market anywhere else in the world. He escaped. Well done. Run, Forrest, run. Let's go back to Cairo. We got plans to visit other pyramids cooler than Khufu's one. But before that, in order to recover a bit from what we saw at the bazaar in Bokash, we head to Mohmein Market. Here, the sellers, with voices hoarse from screaming, praise their goods as well. 
Rabbits, fish, there are chicks of some incredible colors dyed, obviously, and many pigeons too. Those are in particular demand. They sell pigeons here for eating. Or well, for growing and breeding at home, on the roof of the house. Or for eating. And the parrots? Not the parrots, those are for decoration. The guy told us where you can taste the Egyptian pigeon. I decided to pop in. I can't say that I really wanted to, but how can one learn about a country without exploring its cuisine? I refused it for a very long time, but our guide Ahmed said that the dove is just divine. It's more tender than chicken, and you should definitely try it. His mom cooks a pigeon for the family dinner every Friday, and that we must try it. I'm a little nervous, but so be it. Bring it over. I'll tell you the whole truth. Thank you. Probably yes, thanks. Well, it looks like... A pigeon? How does one actually eat it? It has a very peculiar skin. Oh, it's probably see-through. It's stuffed with rice. Well, shall we cut it? Taste it. Actually, where's the meat? I reckon that the pigeon was killed in vain, there's no meat. I found pigeon meat. At the first glance, maybe the first taste, it's just like chicken. And then some slight shade of a different taste comes through. I can't say which one. Maybe it's the spices that affect it. Rice? Rice is like rice, the spices are very hot too. Perhaps they didn't cook the pigeon for us the way they do it in local restaurants. But in local restaurants, I won't be trying it again. Therefore, if you really ate a delicious pigeon, and it was different from what I have on my plate now, write in the comments how was it for you. I don't want to have such an experience anymore. Here I have a Greek salad. I will eat that. Cairo can be roughly divided into 11 parts. Each area represents a particular historical era, with unique architecture and sites. We arrived to Saqqara. This is the oldest necropolis of Egypt's ancient capital, the city of Memphis. It's a burial place for pharaohs, statesmen and other important people. But this place is also famous for the fact that the world's very first pyramid is located here. The Pyramid of Joseph. Many of the pyramids created in this way have survived to this day in different conditions. So, not only tourists, but also archaeologists strive to get to Saqqara. So, the Pyramid of Joseph and its famous pillars. They even appear in films. They show a picture like this. There are these columns. There must be 42. There must be 42. Why 42? Because there are 42 cities. Yes, 22 in the south, 20 in the north. Mm -hmm. It looks and symbolizes like um, a lotus. The step pyramid consists of six tiers and is considered the oldest pyramid in the whole of Egypt. It was built in the 27th century BC. It's like outer space here. Each pyramid is as if an embodiment of eternal life. Our king and queen, only in ancient Egypt, would wear a cartouche. Only the king and queen, only they had a right to write their name on the cartouche. So therefore, if you put on this cartouche, you become like an ancient Egyptian queen. Pharaoh. If you put on a cartouche like this, you live forever after death. Therefore, it has to be put on. That's it, now I'm a pharaoh. A queen! Queen, queen! 
and this is the pyramid of Pepe II. It was the name of another pharaoh of the ancient Egypt. It is the location of one of the wonders of Egypt, which scientists still cannot explain. If you just look around, you won't notice anything extraordinary. But if you turn off the light and shine a flashlight on the walls, then you can see outlines of the pharaohs on both sides of the tomb. It's just a marvelous sight. This statue is smooth, by the way. Seriously? The wall is smooth, yes. No, touch it. Yes, touch it. The wall is smooth. It's such a deceiving thing, really. Just an illusion. The other side is also smooth. It's smooth. It's such a dissonance. How did they come up with it? How did the ancient Egyptians come up with this? Nobody knows again? Nobody knows. From time to time, it seems that all this is the work of extraterrestrial civilizations. This is limestone and this is marble. What we know is what we read in papyrus and there's a lot of information that we don't know. So I think it's like a different civilization. Perhaps aliens after all. No. Just smart? Yes. But it seems I may have found the answer to one of the mysteries of humanity. They are too much alike. Well, this one is just a bit bigger. This one is bigger, yes. This one is smaller. Each and every hieroglyph was drawn identical. And I personally have the impression as if they would put some kind of stencil carving through it, or perhaps something... A stamp. Some kind of stamp. Maybe it was all like dough. They all did it with a stamp and then it dried up. Look, anyway, at least somewhere it will still be spoiled. Even in such places they begin crapping. Alan, you should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, Andre, Andre, you should be ashamed as well. Visiting this pyramid was much more interesting than visiting the Pyramid of Khufu. Honestly, these writings, these riddles, when Pharaoh appears, when you turn off the lights and turn on the flashlight, much more interesting indeed. I sincerely recommend to visit this place. And don't forget that under the video, in the description for the video, I always leave the geolocation of the places we have visited, including this place. Another legacy of Egypt and of the entire planet is the Pyramid of Teti. The exterior was poorly preserved and now it looks more like a small hill. The underground chambers and corridors of the necropolis opposite it are in excellent condition. Pictures of everyday life, how they actually lived, the ancient Egyptians. So the ancient Egyptians had well-developed fishing, right? And this is a hook. Yes. You can clearly see it is. This is a fishing rod, and these are the nets. Mm -hmm. Everything they knew and believed in thousands of years ago in Egypt is a secret sealed with seven seals for us. There are plenty of riddles, and the Serapium Temple is no exception. And we are heading for one of the greatest mysteries yes. of Egypt. Yes. This is a Serapium Temple. The Serapium Temple is a big mystery. An ancient mystery is hidden behind barbed wire. According to archaeologists, this was the burial place for bulls, at the time when they worshipped the ancient god Ptah. It is very warm in this temple in winter, and very cold in summer. How was this temple built in the rocks? This is the first thing. Secondly, how were the 26 sarcophagi, each weighing 100 tons, moved in? That's the second thing. Thirdly, all corners of the sarcophagi are 90 degrees. Precisely. Not 89, not 91, but 90 degrees. All the corners. Mummies of bulls have long disappeared, but the huge sarcophagi in which they were placed remained here. And perhaps the reason is the enormous weight. The last king of the Ottoman Empire, he wanted to present the king of France with one sarcophagus. They couldn't get it out, because if a sarcophagus weighs 100 tons, it takes 500 people to move this sarcophagus. 
Did they present it in the end? No, only the roof remains here. That's the lid? That's the lid. So they made it to the exit and then couldn't? They couldn't. They stopped here. This is 30 tons and this is 70 tons. Let's get it out now. Come on, I'll give you one pound if you do. How much? One pound. I'll give one pound to myself. <laughs> Did they try to take out the lid first? Yes. And drag the lid there? Yes. Sarcophagus so yes. up to here and left. And they left, yes, they couldn't go on. Forget this idea. They didn't want to give something to the King of France so much anyway, right? Yes. Mainly Germans and French come here. And they stand around the sarcophagus, they close their eyes, and stand there for 5 to 10 minutes to receive energy. Because it's basalt. I was ready to wander endlessly around the ruins of the ancient necropolis. But my guide clearly hints that there is a limit for everything. I got really tired with you. Do we ask a lot of questions? No. Physically. Physically? Yes. Do we walk a lot? I walk. I'm already an old man. Do I look handsome there? We have time to go 180 kilometers from Cairo to visit a pearl by the sea. Just three hours drive from Cairo lies the former capital of Egypt, a resort city, a city founded by the great Alexander the Great, Alexandria. And immediately we sense the Russian spirit from the cars. The first thing that catches your eye upon arrival to Alexandria is quite a number of black and yellow cars. I think it's easy to guess that it's a taxi. But it's noteworthy that it's our Lada. It turns out that there is a factory nearby where these cars are assembled. I just love all these old buildings. They are so atmospheric. I'm ready to walk around for hours and admire them. And when they are opposite the Mediterranean Sea, my God, it's just heaven. We will promise that it will be the most delicious ice cream. Thank you very much. Honestly, what's up? Mm, it's tasty. To be honest, it's like I just ate a mango. Mango is very tasty. Yummy ice cream. They didn't lie. What interesting things are on sale there? It's very unusual to see this in Egypt. And the most peculiar thing is that only men Look at these clothes. They probably buy it for their wives. It's hard for me to even imagine it. A very beautiful park. But to be fair, it smells like sewage here. It's just a nightmare. I suppose homeless people live here. Because several are here right now. And to be honest, Alexandria is the first city in Egypt we visited where we met the homeless. Let's go out of here. Alexandria is surprisingly different from other cities in Egypt, both in atmosphere and smell. I think it's a fountain, and I presume it has been off work for a very long time. Look how dirty it is. Let's leave sad stuff. No matter what, Alexandria is an amazing city. It successfully combines the Oriental quarters and European buildings. Ancient Egyptian monuments coexist with the ancient Roman and Greek ones. Alexandria is very different from the rest of Egypt. It's like a completely different country, a completely different culture. And that's what Alexandria hooks you with. One of the attractions is the Kite Bay Fortress, built in the 15th century from limestone and white stone. Within itself, it combines European and Oriental architectural traditions. Still, in Alexandria, unlike in Cairo, you don't feel this breath of antiquity. It's basically reasonable that it's not present here. This is a completely different country. It's kind of European Arabic. Mm. 
both Alexandria and Cairo left me with a mixed impression. These cities can be hated and adored at the same time. However, I'm leaning more towards the latter. In the meantime, there is another way to keep a pleasant aftertaste from the trip. How to end our stay in Cairo, if not with a dinner cruise on the Nile? Friends, on this warm evening, I say goodbye to Cairo. To be fair, I came here to learn more about the history of ancient Egypt, and I learned a tremendous number of curious things. I hope that you will come here and see everything with your own eyes. And we're moving on! Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you don't miss the next video. Bye, everyone!